Richard Brand, Richard Hammond, Lorraine Kelly, Vinci Strider, Jordan Stevens, Helen Flanagan, Joe Wilkinson, Jamelia, Miles Jump, Paul Foot, Rasheen Conaty, Jack D, Claudia Winkleman, and their team captain, Sean Locke. And facing them tonight, Freddie Flintoff, Carol Borderman, Louis Walsh, Alex Jones, Chris Ramsey, Steve Jones, Ashley B, David O'Doherty, Penny Vane, Nick Helm, Matt Ford, Tess Daly, Alex Brooker, Trevor Noah, Josh Whittacom, and their team captain, John Richardson. Now, welcome your host, Jimmy Carr. Hello, and welcome to 8 out of 10 Cats Best Bits, a show about opinion polls, surveys, and the best bits from the last series. Did you know, for example, 47% of people think their partner isn't interested in hearing about their day? Correct. 22% <laughs> of nightclub hookups are one night stands. Yeah, who would have thought the guy you tugged off in a toilet cubicle two minutes after meeting him in Hollywood's nightclub Romford wouldn't turn out to be the love of your life? <laughs> but if you are watching, Darren, call me. 73% <laughs> of dieters abandon their diet at the weekend, and there's a special name for those dieters. Fat people. <laughs> and only 29% of women reach orgasm every time they have sex. I've got a tip for those women, or if they like, I could put the whole thing in. <laughs> Let's get started. What are you talking about? That's the name of our first round. It's our panelist's job to guess the British public's top five most popular talking points. Sean's team, what do you think the nation have been talking about this week? Strictly Come Dancing has started again. <laughs> it's back on. It's huge. Yeah, yeah it is huge. It's massive. <laughs> Although, the lineup up is a bit... Well, I think most of them should bring a utility bill. I don't know who they are. <laughs> <laughs> I thought there were huge stars on there. Uh, There's who? Vanessa Feltz. <laughs> <laughs> you did that. Yeah. I said. No. I'm just thinking, like, do you think maybe she's just said, like, I'll come and do the show, but I'm just not gonna do too much because I'm a bit heavy. Yeah. <laughs> You mean, like, serious, or what do you...? No, I mean, like, seriously. Oh, no, you're like... being incredibly bitchy. OK, great. No! <laughs> I didn't realise where, you... didn't realize where not... you were going with this, no, but no, I'm with you. You can't go, no, no, no. you just called her fat. No, you go, I didn't. No, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't call her fat. I didn't say she... I didn't, I didn't, I didn't. <laughs> because I'm just saying she hasn't danced much, and to me, if you go in on a dancing show, you should dance. <laughs> she... No, in your defence, she yeah. came on my show at the start of the year, Let's Dance, and she said, I'm not going to dance. And literally, I don't know if you saw it, we lowered her from the ceiling onto a gigantic eight-foot-long cannon with her legs spread-eagled in a sequin leotard. <laughs> Is that the only way you could get her in the building? <laughs> Sean, would you go on the show? Would you go on Strictly? Well, you know, if... Um, <laughs> if my whole career fell apart in tatters... <laughs> I had really no option and a lot of tax bills to pay and <laughs> situation. <laughs> no, I actually didn't mean that. <laughs> what I found particularly annoying about Strictly is that if you are a camp man, you are allowed to be ruder than a man who is not camp. For example, if I were to watch Rachel Riley dance and I were to say, you're bottom looked like a sack of potatoes there and, frankly, it made me sick. <laughs> There'd be complaints. But if I were a camp man like Bruno and, your bottom looked like sack of potatoes, you know? <laughs> 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 Thank you. One of the celebrities, Patrick Robinson, is from Casualty. His dance starts well, but halfway through he starts climbing a stepladder to hang Christmas lights over a bath <laughs> and you think this isn't going to end well. <laughs> <laughs> OK, John C, what else have the nation been talking about? The, the Star Wars open auditions in Bristol. This is huge news, isn't it? Brilliant. It's funny that they queued up for about eight hours in the freezing rain. <laughs> Over 4,000 people turned up to the auditions in Bristol and about 1,500 were turned away without even being seen. Without even being seen? That's yeah. harsh, isn't it? Just... <laughs> <laughs> I didn't need to go to the auditions because I've already got a part in the new Star Wars film. 
Have you? Yeah, I've already been cast. I play the postman on the Death Star. <laughs> Insufferably cheery postman. <laughs> Walking around the Death Star going... <laughs> May the parcel force be with you. <laughs> Listen, well, what they've done now is they've said that because so many people turn up to these open auditions, they're going to allow people to audition on video, and you can just send in your audition tape. Oh. John, Sean, do you want to...? Yeah, I'll do it, yeah. yeah okay, fine. Well, I don't need to, I've already got a part, but... <laughs> well, you, well, you've been <laughs> such give, a versatile if I you, actor, if I, I give can you that see part, me. If I give Sean that one, you could be, you could be Vader, you could be Luke. Just right. classic lines, <laughs> you just got to embody the role. All uh, right, okay. All right, action. If only you knew the power <laughs> <laughs> of the dark side. Obi-Wan never told you what happened to your father. <laughs> he told me enough. He told me you killed him. <laughs> no! No! The second no's not in the script, but I'm... <laughs> <laughs> Now that's never eat. <laughs> that is in the script. <laughs> no, that's not true. That's impossible. <laughs> Say it's your feelings. <laughs> you know it to be true. <laughs> no, 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 no. no. <laughs> See, it must be the um, the Wimbledon final. Oh, no, 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 well, no. Tennis. <laughs> <laughs> what, you've, what's the matter with tennis? Well, I'll, be, I'll be dead honest with you. I used to play the third most boring sport known to man. <laughs> Cricket, only trumped by tennis and Formula One. <laughs> Do you not like cricket? It was a means to an end. <laughs> 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 I thought it was an incredible thing. A British man won for the first time in 77 years. And he hasn't won it since, Jimmy. Let's not let him off. <laughs> this country hasn't had a Wimbledon winner for nearly six months now, and I've had enough. <laughs> the sad thing is, it's a boring name, Andy Murray, as well, isn't it? If his name was, like, Dick Gobbler or something... Then... <laughs> At least now in 50 years, when Sue Barker goes, and, of course, Britain hasn't had a Wimbledon men's champion since Dick Gobbler. <laughs> but you, you're a tennis fan, aren't you, Jimmy? You, you like your tennis. I love it. I think it's incredible. Why is tennis incredible? I... It's like cricket, but instead of emitting it and it going mate, mate, at 50 I, I, I'm, yards I'm away... not protecting cricket here. I know it's boring. Do you mind? Anyway, I've, I've got no, there's no two ways about it. Given that the exciting bit of cricket is when he hits it, imagine if the guy at the other end hits it straight back. <laughs> Sean Steen, what else have the nation been talking about this week? Batches! <laughs> <laughs> badgers! It's a very upbeat response. Ah, they can't kill all the badgers. Well, they don't know how many there are. They've, badgers have moved the goalposts. <laughs> <laughs> this is actually a quote from a government minister. When Environment Secretary Owen Paterson was asked if he'd moved the goalposts, because they're now saying they need to kill more badgers, he said, the badgers have moved the goalposts. <laughs> <laughs> they do! And that's why they must die. That's just... That's <laughs> they do! Richard, what's your problem with We've with got badges? a massive problem with badges. We have a lot of badges anyway, and now we've got all these refugee badges coming in, running away <laughs> from all these... sound like Clarkson, mate. No! <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm a supporter of the badges, and I've actually rescued two badges, um, and, um, cos they came round to shoot them, and I had a cottage down there, and I took them in, and I pretended they were slippers. <laughs> and I, I would have got away with it, but one of them started coughing. <laughs> <laughs> Carol, what do you make of the badger cop? I think it's interesting because obviously TB is supposedly spread by the badgers and with this cull now they're all running for the hills and obviously spreading it even more. There is no TB. The whole thing is just the countryside alliance. It gives them an excuse to shoot something that's slightly black. <laughs> <laughs> The government have launched a scheme uh, for new mothers where if they breastfeed for six months, they get given some shopping vouchers. Is it's that a in the... scheme? That's in the news, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. But how do we check? How do we know what they're doing? How do it... we check? Yeah. Well, I'm happy to help. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what I mean. Finally, my how boob inspector T-shirt will have a purpose. <laughs> Seeing as I'm the only one qualified, I feel, on this panel to speak about 
the vicissitudes of uh, breastfeeding. Um, now, I just want to tell you a little story. Um, a friend of mine uh, who was a midwife went round to visit a woman who's breastfeeding her five-year-old. And um, she said to this woman, look, I think he is, uh, he's a little bit old to be breastfed. And this child took his face off his mother's bosom and went, fuck off. <laughs> Johnstein, what else have the nation been talking about? It must be the return of the X Factor, which is why Kurt Cobain killed himself. <laughs> <laughs> but it's different now because there's chairs. The chairs are good, aren't they? There's chair. Oh, I love a chair, mate. Don't like the singing or any of the people involved, but those <laughs> chairs. Oh, I was gripped. They're like, someone going to sit on it. Oh, they're sitting on it. Oh, what it's added a new level of cruelty. It's horrendous. So what, what happened? There's the so, people who've all been voted through. So all... what we do now is we've got down to the list where there's a shy gay one and there's the girl who egged off her mates who clearly wanted to be famous and was never her mates anyway. <laughs> and a thin man and a fat one. <laughs> They're all there. <laughs> that musical chairs. There's seven of them, but there's only six chairs. So instead of taking them back and breaking their hearts, they put them on chairs and they break their hearts live on camera. <laughs> See, they should have chairs and nooses. So... <laughs> so you have to stand on a chair with a noose around your neck <laughs> and then Dermot O'Leary just comes and kicks it away from you. <laughs> <laughs> Amy, do you watch X-Factor? Uh, no, I must admit I haven't watched it. Strange concept, isn't it, going on a reality TV show? Because the people, essentially, what they end up with, they end in a situation where they'll be temporarily too well-known to take public transport and because it's unwaged, they are still too poor to travel by cab. <laughs> and that is the real sob story for me in that whole context. Well, a leading psychologist this week claims the X Factor producers are deliberately creating cruel twists because viewers have become immune to sob stories. I'm bored of them. I mean, what sort of person uses a sob story to get on television and become famous? <laughs> Isn't it even talking about X Factor? Of course. Probably talking about whoever was voted out last week. Who, who was voted out last week? Wasn't it Abby last week? Abby, uh, yeah. Now, did you think she was any good? I thought she was okay. Just okay. Kind of boring. <laughs> I didn't think she should have done the show. What do you think she should have done? Just made you a cup of tea and fucked up? I think she's like a singer. <laughs> no! I think she's like a singer songwriter. I just didn't think she was versatile enough. So, who's your star act this year? Well, I've got three left. You've got three? That's I've incredible. Three, yeah. Haven't got Paul Akista left, though, have you, Louis? No. <laughs> no, but you know what? No, he's coming down. He's coming back Don't next talk year. talk to me. I, I've, I've lost all respect for you. Why? <laughs> because he's good, isn't he? He's You're really telling me I'm the best voice he's in the really thing. He's really good. I want him to come back next year. But he, he was, was in it guest. this year. He was down with me the weekend. <laughs> so, what you say to someone who's late? He came That's what to the see me the weekend. Say. I looked after him the weekend. I showed him what he should do next year. What do you mean you looked after him at the week? He, he came down to the show <laughs> and I showed him what really happened. <laughs> Johnstein, what do you think the nation have been talking about? What well, have you been chatting about? On Tuesday, England won the World Cup, didn't they? Hey, <laughs> good, hey, hey, good, hey, 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 who are you? <laughs> Sorry about that. Henning, so you, you've lived... How long have you lived in the UK? Since 2002. So I've seen them, I've seen them win many, many World Cups. <laughs> <laughs> I don't enjoy football as much as I used to, because our German side, we are rubbish these days. We have not, not won a major tournament for 17 years. <laughs> Haven't in, been to a <laughs> final of one for about five years. And... <laughs> To a semi-final of one for practically 18 months. So. <laughs> Can I remind you you're a guest here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what, 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 what. <laughs> you a big football fan, Helen? Um, yeah, I like football. I think it can be quite exciting. But I've been away, so I haven't actually caught up the news. So they had this um, they had a game that basically got them towards the, the World Cup, yeah? So who was that against? 
Leeds. Just against. They beat. They beat Leeds. They beat Leeds. No, Eng they didn't. <laughs> no, so it was England, England against... played against Jossie's Giants. No, no. Who did England play against? England played against. Count Duckula's eleven. Mate, <laughs> 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 right, they played um, Poland. The Poles. They looked ill, though, didn't they? I saw that. The Polish people in general, they look fairly ill. <laughs> Whoever, whoever they replaced, so they always looked as if they hadn't slept for three weeks. <laughs> They've had a tough time of it historically, yeah. to be honest. <laughs> oh. Maybe they've been watching the, the History Channel just before the game. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> what those Germans did to us. <laughs> they realised, actually, we should be playing with the English. <laughs> The nation been talking about this oh, week. Right. What do you think, Joe? Oh, possibly Miley Cyrus smoking a joint somewhere. Mm. Yes, Miley Cyrus allegedly smoked a joint at the MTV Music Awards. There she yeah. is with the herbal cigarette. <laughs> is she going swimming straight after that? <laughs> Jordan, what did you think of it? You're, you're a pop star. Well, she came out in the news recently and said um, she's not being um, exploited. She's actually in complete control of what she's doing, and she's the world's biggest feminist. <laughs> can, I just, can I just say, I literally am the biggest feminist. <laughs> <laughs> so if Miley wants to come and see me, she can. Would you put a flea in her ear? I bloody well would. Put <laughs> a fucking fist in her ear. Right? <laughs> Yes, Miley Cyrus caused controversy, allegedly smoking marijuana on stage at the MTV Music Awards, although I saw the footage of Miley and I think I could see a better crack. <laughs> <laughs> there was a cabinet reshuffle, Cabinet reshuffle. Yes, people are so excited by it. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, yeah. what they do is, as soon as someone has, like, got to grips with what they're doing, they're doing a fairly good job, so they move them to a different department mm. where they don't know what they're doing. Yeah. They move them like their environment and they're moving <clears> them to health. You don't have that mean any other thing, do you? You don't have people saying, oh, yeah, you're doing quite a good job working on the tills at Asda. Why don't you try your hand at being a falconry expert? <laughs> <laughs> I think what they should do is, if you're a minister for something, you have to dress appropriately. Ooh. So if you're the minister of fisheries, you wear a sou'wester and carry a lobster pot. <laughs> All the time. Health it's, minister, it's, nurse's uniform. Yeah, or yeah, sports, you've got wet hair and a tracksuit on. <laughs> Dress according to your job. Foreign minister, it could be quite controversial. <laughs> 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 yeah, we Yeah. Maybe sell a tape. No, 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 no. <laughs> no. That's where we went too far. The onions and the berries are controversial. That's why I'm highlighting the pitfalls there. I'm not recommending it as an idea. I'm highlighting how wrong that would be. <laughs> Matt, you used to work for the Labour Party. Yeah. Right? What, what do you think is the matter with politics? I think there's, I think there's a serious lack of personalities in it, and I think Ed Miliband is uh, sort of part of that problem. And there are people. I shouldn't like Nigel Farage, but that's the end of that sentence. <laughs> <laughs> People like politicians that make us feel good. And Farage, even though I disagree with most of what he says, he's got that sort of, like, braying golf club... You know, the sort of guy who'd turn up at a golf course and go, Roger, you bastard! <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know about you guys, but I'm still riding high on the royal baby news. Aww. It's hard to come down from that, isn't it? <laughs> very few moments in your life that give you that sort of, like, just mm. buzz. Just... <laughs> Freddie, would you give any advice to the royal parents? Kate, yeah, you? you've got to get him into a strict routine, make him sleep through early doors. I imagine that's easier for you than most parents because you are terrifying. So if you say to a baby, go to sleep, it'll go, be all right. <laughs> to be fair, compared to a baby, everyone's quite terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> like, compared to a baby, I'm quite intimidating. No, no not like you. <laughs> not a good example to pick. <laughs> you look younger than the royal baby. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he does. But he's so oh, cute. Robin. No, I know, but you're cute. Looking at me face, you're so cute. You know what? When you're 90, you'll still look like that. You'd be glad. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't come on here to be flirted with by Lorraine. <laughs> Do you remember oh. the last time I met Lorraine? I've only met Lorraine once, and I want to kind of clear this up because okay. um, you had a very similar approach of kind of flirt patronisation. <laughs> <And laughs> 
And then, just before I left, I was getting in the taxi from this show, and uh, as the door was closing, you said, if I was 20 years younger, and the door closed... <laughs> and I've got no idea how that sentence ended. <laughs> You'd be an embryo. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, William and Kate had a baby boy this year. When George was christened, Kate and William decided to shun fuddy-duddy royal tradition and chose university friends to be godparents. So they chose Lord Trumpington Smedley Posh, Tarquin Farquhar II and Lady <laughs> Poshington Toffee-Nose of the Norfolk Toffee-Noses. <laughs> Is it the case that the Jackson family have tried to sue uh, um, the, the promoter? AEG, hired, yes, the promoters of the concert. Conrad Murray, and uh, they lost. So they the Jackson family tried to sue AEG for $1.6 billion in damages. And I was really pleased when I had this story came up because I always think, Michael Jackson, it's the death that keeps on giving. <laughs> <laughs> the comics, you know, you know, comic, for comics, it's just great because you can just come up. As soon as any story with him, you go, brilliant, we can do all the Jackson jokes again. <laughs> Get them out. I think comedians should actually build a statue, a monument to him, just to say thanks. <laughs> what happened was that the production company provided Michael Jackson with a doctor, who then provided Michael Jackson with a huge array of... I mean, they found, they found I mean, something like 78 different types of drugs in, in his bedroom uh, when he was dead, when they looked. And the most worrying of them was cowpaw. <laughs> and, um... <laughs> or, or his own personal favourite, Rehipsy Licks. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of them were sedatives and relaxants. I'm surprised he wasn't carried around in liquid form. <laughs> Like just sloshing around, he gets his mic all ready for his next rehearsal. We just pour him out onto the stage. Well, the sad Whoa. thing is, a lot of people, I mean, people he did just kind of keeps know... giving. <laughs> people... Thanks, Michael. <laughs> well, they got rid of his statue, didn't they? Off um, yeah. up at Fulham. How far had invited him to a, fo a football match, and uh, he, he, went, he went to see Fulham versus Wigan. <laughs> I like the idea that Alpha had rang him up and said, uh, yeah, is that Michael? Yeah, who's that? It's, it's Al Fayed. And he says, uh, do you want to go for a football match? Well, who's playing? Wigan. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> <I'll, I'll... laughs> new owners bought Fulham. New owners bought Fulham, they took the statue down. And it's a bit like, you know, when you move into a new house, and you think, well, the first thing is going is that avocado bathroom. <laughs> We're going to get rid of that pebble dashing. And the statue of the paedophile out the front. That's <laughs> <laughs> what are we doing? What are we doing looking up? <laughs> yes, it's my <Michael. laughs> So our next round is Pick of the Polls. Sean, Joe, Rasheen, pick a question. Um, the bear, please, Jimmy. OK. Last week, an 80-year-old Russian man survived a fight with a bear. <laughs> True story. He bravely kicked and headbutted the bear before the bear threw him off a cliff. <laughs> He survived, but a bear basically came at him, he fought him off. So we asked our studio <coughs> audience, do you consider yourselves brave? Yes or no? Uh, I was really hoping you had a clip. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not dismissing the bravery of a man, but it sounds to me like he survived because he got thrown off a cliff. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to speculate, had the fight continued, he would have got the shit kicked out. <laughs> he was an 80-year-old Russian shepherd. He was approached by a bear in a raspberry field. <laughs> <laughs> So this is true. This is a true. This is a nursery. This happened this week. Approached, approached by a bear in a raspberry field. <laughs> he, he showered him with kicks and headbutts. <laughs> and reporters Sorry. say he managed to knock the bear off balance before it threw him off a cliff. <laughs> he was hospitalised with bruises, bite wounds, and four broken ribs. Wow. Discharged within a few days, and it's not known how the bear is. <laughs> What's a shepherd doing in a raspberry field? How mobile are these raspberries? <laughs> <laughs> well, I like the line, he was approached by the bear. <laughs> I can imagine, if you're the shepherd, a bear goes, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, to be fair, we've it's only got the shepherd's version of this story. <laughs> I'd like to hear the bear's bear version. <laughs> In bear news. The bear was sexually was... assaulted today by a, like... mad, <laughs> a mad Russian. <laughs> 
<laughs> Joe, if you got attacked by a bear, what would your strategy be? What would you do? Work the body. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Do you think you're a hypochondriac, yes or no? Well, it's difficult to tell, isn't it? If you think you are, but you're waiting to be told, then are you or aren't you? <laughs> I'll tell you what, the, the test is actually the uh, Whiteley Index for hypochondriacs, OK? So just answer this honestly, we'll see if you're a hypochondriac. Do you worry a lot about your health? No. I've got bigger problems than that, Jimmy. <laughs> Healthy and miserable. <laughs> I'd rather be ill and happy. <laughs> <laughs> Do you find that you're often aware of various things happening to your body? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Do you think there's something seriously wrong with your body? <laughs> <laughs> I think other people think there's something seriously wrong with it. I think particularly, women. Particularly the front. Yeah. <laughs> it is. There's a sort of strange uh, swelling at the front. I think I've got a big round... Erection! <laughs> we would have got there, mate. Don't panic. <laughs> I appreciate you being part of the team and all, and... <laughs> I don't think they're going to spot this knob gag. <laughs> <laughs> Better help these guys out, there's a knob gag and they haven't seen it. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I call an emergency. <laughs> we're, we're ruling out the possibility that it's the first one he's ever had and he wants everyone to know about it. Correction! <laughs> <Action! laughs> Most people find spending time with animals relaxing. True or false? What do you think? <laughs> Jack, do you, find, do you find animals relaxing? Yeah, I do, actually. What, I, have you got any pets? I have pets, yeah. What have I, you got? I've got two dogs, two dachshunds. I find them that's relaxing to be around. That's not a dog. Yeah, don't that's you... That's not a dog. Don't you diss <laughs> the no, dachshund. That's not a dog! It is. It's, a, it is, it's, 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 it's like a, a sawn-off Doberman. Yeah. <laughs> so, the question is, most people find spending time with animals relaxing. Let's put it to the test. John, uh, I've got a little treat for you. Let's bring on a little puppy. There he is. Oh. She's a little mastiff. That's we're just a puppy. I think she's only 12 weeks old. Oh, the size of those high. paws. That's just their tastiest, isn't it? <laughs> Have a little stroke. What... Is that not the most adorable creature? Oh, my God. Green not... eyes. Huh? Green eyes. Green eyes. It's the one from Turner and Hooch. It's exciting. <laughs> Amazing. You can all leave now whenever you want. I'll just... <laughs> so, John, I can already see you look elated and relaxed. <laughs> Sean, you look grumpy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> See, we've got brilliant handlers in today for all the animals. I say all the animals. Oh, cause, God. No, because we got you a puppy, so we thought it would be only fair, Sean, to get you an animal. Oh, no. I genuinely think you'll like it. <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> no, 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 Sean, are you not...? No, no. I <laughs> well, I'll have, bring it, bring it, bring Jack, him over here. Roger. Are you not...? Are you genuinely...? Are you genuinely not keen on snakes? No. Is that not your thing? Well... Huh? Go on, Boa. <laughs> really? Oh, look how it moves. It's amazing. It likes you, Jimmy, because you're cold-blooded as well. <laughs> oh. Feels like some of my shoes. <laughs> oh, hang on. It, oh. Oh, round the neck, actually. You can really feel how... how they do their thing. Ah. Oh. <laughs> Close again. Yeah, it's fine. I'm not. I'm not too worried. Oh, hang on. Oh, 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 oh you little flirt. <laughs> that is nice. <laughs> oh, it's nice to hold something that thick and powerful. <laughs> don't look at me. <laughs> you don't want me to look at you when I'm touching it. No. <laughs> Most people find driving a stressful experience. True or false? False. It's not stressful. I'm usually drunk anyway. You, you... <laughs> <laughs> is that why you crashed that car? Is that why you pissed? <laughs> <laughs> that was on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> why did that crash? <laughs> what happened? Tire blew. Tire went bang at 300 really? mile an hour. And... Why, why, would, why would that happen? Why would a tire go up? It was bad luck. It wasn't a plot to kill you. <laughs> I hadn't thought of it like that until yeah. now. No! It was a tyre blue, but it happens to... Well, I'd just like to say thank you for all the jokes we got out of it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> from... That's why I did it. I've actually never met someone who's a text joke before. What, was I a text joke? Oh, yeah, there's loads oh. of them going out. <laughs> I suppose that's 
that's one of the terrible so things, is you sort of missed that. You what missed that? Seven, seven years ago. Did anyone ago, send them to you? Well, no, I couldn't see, could I? Uh, <laughs> there was some crackers going around. My favourite one was uh, the reason they call you the hamster is after the crash, your nuts were in your cheeks. <laughs> Most people think the smartphone is the best ever invention, true or false? Jack, I've got this for you. This is an invention. This is apparently to help you learn how to smile better. <laughs> what it is, is you, it's a gym for the mouth. So what you do is you just pop that in your mouth. Oh. And then you can exercise your mouth so that you're better able to smile. And it also works as a diaphragm as well for women. <laughs> So you put the whole thing in and then you, you can exercise. <laughs> that is not what this is for. It is what this is for. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, Are you sure? Yeah. No, it's the not. The fur hasn't fallen off. Thank you for that. Oh. <laughs> I feel like a blow-up doll. <laughs> That's what I feel like. Oh, well, thanks, anyway. <laughs> Do people take too many pictures of themselves? Yes or no? I would say no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, are you aware of how many pictures you take of yourself in the average week? Well, all girls do my age. Like, you know, when you're going out, before you go out, you take lots of pictures and stuff. I mean, if I look on Instagram, I can look at my account and there's loads of all my friends and there's loads of things and everyone's got selfies. Let's have a look at some of the pictures of you recently. Um, <laughs> have you put on weight since that was taken? <laughs> 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 no, there's, there's an art to it. <laughs> Do you take many pictures of yourself, Miles? Uh, I've knocked a few out. <laughs> Miles, one in eight people admit to taking sexy selfies. Yeah. Are you one of those? Ah, uh, listen, if it comes out sexy, it comes out sexy. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I just think of the sex selfies. <laughs> yeah. Do you think facial hair is attractive, yes or no? Depends what's going on with the rest of the face. You can't judge. How do you mean you? what's going on with the rest of the face? What? Like, it's, asking do you think facial hair is attractive is a bit like saying, do you like teeth? Like, you know, yes. Yeah, but you know. I like teeth on a girl. Yeah, but you know. <laughs> I can't. I can't believe we're even having this discussion. Like, like, look at Joe. Yeah, I'm dynamite. <laughs> Do you like it? Do you actually like it? Of course I don't. <laughs> Who would like this? It's fun, facial hair, and it's warm as well for winter. Mm. It's like a cardigan for your face. <laughs> Chindigan. <laughs> It's not attractive, though, is it, to answer the question? It's not sexy, is it? OK, well, what do you think? I'm adamant to say yes. I think it's very in at the minute. Like, I mean, definitely not that. <laughs> but, I mean, Joe's... Well, no, not that either, but, like, a kind of... <laughs> like a designer stubble, like what John's going on. I think it's very attractive. Well, you're very kind to say so. Not a problem. <laughs> Have you grown oh. a beard? Do you want to try one? Or do I want to try one? I've got... I've, I've brought moustaches. Definitely. <laughs> oh, my God. I think that's the one for me. <laughs> I still feel I could run quite a good regional, like a regional department store. Yeah. Welcome. <laughs> Sean, any interest in a moustache? You're more than welcome. Yeah. <laughs> you just had a bloke off the Pringles. What you, what, yeah, I, I, yeah, I oh, could sell Pringles, couldn't I? Um... What, would you, what would you care for? What about you've, me? Got a, you've got a buffet of moustaches there. I do, of course, of course I do. <laughs> would you like one, Roshi? Yes, please. Of course you would. Hang on. <laughs> Here you go. This will look terrific on you, because I think for the, for the blonde colouring. Thank you. No problem at all. Happy to help. There's no point, Joe. <laughs> Some games <laughs> you can't play. Oh, I like a cat. <laughs> 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 I, I very much like it on you, actually. You've awakened something dark <laughs> within my sexuality. Thank you. John looks like a magician. <laughs> <laughs> is that supposed to be like this? It really yeah. hurts. <laughs> That's a really good look for you, trust me. I'm, like, forgetting things. It's nipping that hard. <laughs> you look like a rival cat. You look like you've got whiskers on. <laughs> <laughs> I got one for you, Joe. <laughs> you can just see what you'd lo look like with a beard.
Different beards can mean different things. For example, a Santa Claus style beard means friendly with kids, whereas a Joe Wilkinson style beard means too friendly with kids. <laughs> And the winner is, is the name of our final round. Top thing men worry about. The main, uh, the main thing I worry about as a man is the assumption that I know more about wine than anyone else at the table. <laughs> they pour a little bit, always in my glass. I don't know. <laughs> oh, because you're the only one at the table. <laughs> What do you think men worry about, Jamelia? I, I, you know, I, I can only... I genuinely can only think of one thing, and I'm, I don't want to say it because I just think my nan might be watching... Whisper it to time. me. Whisper it to me and I'll say it. <laughs> OK. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I, can't, I can't even say it. Honest, I can't even say it. Write, write it down. Write it down. Write it down. Or just draw a picture of one. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, what, what do you think, Jamelia? It's, um... It's a nine-letter word. <laughs> a premature ejaculation. Ooh, you saucy cow. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, that's, a, that's the only thing I can think about. Or finding out the football scores too early, so one or the, one or the other. <laughs> it's all about being early with you, isn't it? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Penises are just a pain in the arse. They're bit, bit... Um... <laughs> when they When they're up and about, they're an inconvenience. And when they're not, they're always there, aren't they? It's better to have a thing that's in, I think. Are you saying you'd rather have a vagina because it'd be tidier? <laughs> that's insane! <laughs> that's the most insane thing you've ever said. <laughs> you like things to be tidy, but you're basically saying, oh, I'd like to be castrated, because then it'd be neater. <laughs> Top thing that makes British people angry. What do you think? Uh, it strikes me as a visitor to this country the things that annoy people are very often not the big things like the breakup of the NHS or bankers bonuses like apostrophes in the wrong place so <laughs> it's probably that was the final straw in 1939 it wasn't the takeover of Poland by Hitler it was like he spelt Nazis with an apostrophe oh <laughs> let's get him what makes you angry you what know? makes me angry um when I'm driving when I'm driving if we come to like a zebra crossing and like Someone feels like because there's ever crossing. Well, that'll stop for you, but say thanks because I don't have to stop. You, no, yeah, you do. Yes, you, you do. do, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, you do, yeah. I know. You do legally, you do. Yeah, yeah, legally you do, but I really don't. I'm in a car, you're on your, you're on, <laughs> you're on your feet. Yeah. If I didn't stop, what were you going to do? I absolutely get that because when, yeah. you, when you're driving, because all it requires it's is the, it's just face. the eyebrow raise. It's yeah, just that's little, it. Like, that's some it. people that's look at me like, no. they look at me like, oh, you You don't do the eyebrow raise on a zebra crossing? No, you're meant to stop. You meant to be considerate of, of, of pedestrians, people who are softer than you. You're in a big metal box. <laughs> and I meant to say thank you for not killing me. <laughs> no, that's basic that's that's like... standards. That's like saying thank you to somebody for not stabbing you in the head while you walk down the street. <laughs> Thanks for not punching me in the face. <laughs> Thanks for not pushing me in front of that train. You spend your whole life thanking people for not doing something insane, which would be running you over. <laughs> in fact, I'd be more likely to just go, ah! <laughs> I don't do that because there's a lot of hard people driving who get out of their cars and beat the crap out of you. But really? You've had a bit of luck if it's Tinchy, really. Yeah. <laughs> you don't know. You never know. Yeah. You know, don't underestimate anybody. <laughs> Especially me! <laughs> <laughs> You came so close, Jimmy. <laughs> OK, Alex, have any guests on the one show annoyed you? Uh, there's been about four. Let's name them. <laughs> Come on, let's How go about now? One Direction. <laughs> no, they're, they're all right. Oh, yeah, I mean, they've got about literally 115 people with them choosing which ripped vest they're going to put on. <laughs> but, um, they're all right. And they always make the right choice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can't get it wrong, really, can you? Well, no, you I mean whatever you, should... you put on those guys, it's God. just great. <laughs> Worst thing about living alone. <laughs> Very much your specialist area we've hit here. Well, I liked it. It's just the, the sympathy is the worst thing. People just say, "You're all right, living on your own." Yeah, have you not got any mates? Yeah, because I don't live with them. <laughs> I loved it. I loved living on my own. What was the best thing about living on your own? 
oh, just all of it, nothing moved, just, you know, think I'm going to stay up all night, doesn't matter. No one's going to wake me up, no one's going to come round. Actually, it was tragic. <laughs> I've just remembered what it was like, and now you ask the question, it's the constant crushing loneliness, the fear it's never going to end and you're going to die on your own. <laughs> Hardest job. The uh, company that makes Jim will fix it badges are struggling. <laughs> oh, <dear>. oh. <laughs> Is it police nurse? Because they're both difficult jobs. Imagine if you had to do two of them at once. <laughs> <laughs> police nurse. The police nurse. Police. <laughs> do you hear policeman? Like, oh, you're not feeling very well. <laughs> <laughs> Police nurse. <laughs> Police nurse, mum. <laughs> You're saying mother's most difficult job in the world, isn't it? <laughs> it is. Sean, take that back. Yeah, rather than welding on a North Sea oil rig. <laughs> you, you get a lunch break on a North Sea oil rig, don't you? Don't get a break if you're a mother, though, Sean. Yes, you do. It's just a, oh, it's a whole job's one long tea break. It's just a long tea break. <laughs> have you stayed at home all day with a small child? Yes, I have, yeah. Yeah. Have you fed it from your boobs? <laughs> <laughs> Best way to impress your friends. The way I like to impress my friends is this. <laughs> No, because I've got trousers and they, the fly opens up that way. <laughs> it opens up from the bottom. Can you not do that ever again? <laughs> that... Yeah, because most flies open down, mine open up. Yeah. So, because I've got an Australian tailor. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's be yourself. God, no, have you met you? <laughs> Titty waggles. <laughs> <laughs> Can I have another titty waggle there, please? Just Will you little... be my friend? Yeah, I want, I want to be a friend. <laughs> well, that's a pretty impressive titty waggle. The best way to impress your friends, and it's what I do, is I show them my hole. <laughs> <laughs> Could you... I mean, that's, I've been that's a pretty full answer. I mean... <laughs> oh, I see! Oh, God! I see how you could... No, no, oh, I don't... Just... I've been digging this hole for a long time. I've... <laughs> I've, after the last three years, I do two hours every day digging this hole <laughs> in the back garden, and it's so deep. And I always say, come and have a look at my hole. <laughs> Is that, Jimmy? That's number Shame. three. <laughs> Top thing people wish they were better at. Is it first aid? Because I always think, I wish I was better at first aid. Because the amount of times I'm in situations where there's somebody says, does anyone here know first aid? And I can't help myself. I always go, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm working on them, I'm thinking, Oh, I shouldn't even be better at this. I shouldn't really have put myself forward. Yeah. Oh, no, it's, I don't know what's matter. It's just not working, that is, this. That's literally the worst thing you could do to a twisted ankle. Yeah. <laughs> handshakes. I'm shit at handshakes. Oh, I catch them at the wrong angle. That's a bit weak. I need what a What were you hoping for? Look at him. He's wearing a mustard cardigan. <laughs> I need a handshake that is non-threatening, but says to a plumber, yeah, I could do this myself, mate, but I ain't got the time. <laughs> and I've got a handshake that says, it's broken! <laughs> <laughs> Biggest turn-off on a date. Oh. Go on, Claudia. A fancy car. There's something wrong with a man who has to drive a nice car. I won't get in it. I won't sleep with them, I won't talk to them, I will just immediately close the door and say bye bye What would be your ideal vehicle of choice? Would it be like a minicab? <laughs> no, I'd like a very old, dilapidated car, perhaps that you would have to get into from the back. Nothing would work. Man, <laughs> he's wearing a fisherman's sweater. Maybe he's got some paint on his hands, cos actually he's an artist as well as a fisherman. His hair's like that. <laughs> he's singing to Duran Duran. He'd get it. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, I'd fuck him as well. This is your fantasy. This is... <laughs> what does your husband drive? I don't know. I don't let him out the house. <laughs> what do you think, Josh? You strike me as quite a ladies' man. No, I'm not good. I, um, I went on a date when um, I was meeting a girl, and I, I, I was meeting her outside the pub, and I thought I was quite tired. And when I'm quite tired, I think if I do a, a few stretches, 
It'll wake, <laughs> it'll wake me up. <laughs> right. I didn't see her coming, so as she was walking down the street, it looked like I was limbering up. <laughs> what were you doing? What kind of move? Go with the move. But so you start with something simple, but it was a long. <laughs> I didn't realise it was a long street, so it would have started like that. Yeah. Yeah, sure. But it got quite pelvic by the end. Um, <laughs> so there was kind of that, one, uh, and then kind of <laughs> <laughs> waiting for a girl. You were hoping for it. Waiting she's... for a girl, just working on those Wait. hamstrings. Yeah. You don't want to. Yeah. You want to pull one of those in a vital no, moment no. later. <laughs> yeah, it, it was a disaster. Yeah. This whole thing's really brought up some bad memories for me. <laughs> I've never felt so good. <laughs> <laughs> well, that sound tells me it's the end of the round and the end of the show. <laughs> Thanks to all our panellists, our wonderful studio audience, and to all of you for watching at home. That's it from us. Good night. Hi, I'm Jimmy Carr, the guy you just saw in that video. Thanks for watching it, because uh, somehow I get money from that. I, I don't know how. I don't, I don't know. Thanks for watching it, and somehow that benefits me. And hopefully I'll see a live show at some point further down the sunny road. Good luck.